y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. We are continuing my paint marker marathon with Deco Color Markers. This is a brand produced by, I think it's Marvi Uchida, but um, I keep getting them confused with the Deco Art paints that are usually sold at Joann's. I have a whole bunch of their little paint tubes, but this is a completely separate brand. Same price range, but these don't have acrylic markers. These do. And I gotta say, I think these are the closest in packaging to Posca pens, at least in looks. Each marker in this series is being tested on three criteria, the packaging, the swatching, and the drawing. For those who have been here through the whole series so far, I am sorry you have to hear this every single time, but I feel like it would be really confusing if not. But without further ado, why don't we get into the packaging? I, um, I would really like to have a chat with someone at Marvi Uchida, because what is this, what is this backdrop behind the brand name here? Um, putting it nicely, it looks like bad coffee staining, but also it looks like someone had a really fun time after the bathroom. I've seen some of the packaging images online for more sets and they don't have this weirdly scrubby background. It's kind of even worse on the back. It's probably supposed to be antiquing. I'm pretty sure the same brand has like antiquing inks that a lot of people use for bullet journaling and cosplay, but it just doesn't look great here. I, I'm concerned that, um, why is works great on in parentheses? Is that anecdotal? Is someone saying this? But it says it's pigmented, non-toxic, xylene-free, water-based acrylic formula. When I originally opened these markers inside of this plastic packaging, each one of these markers was individually sealed. So kind of a waste of plastic. So just to compare, here is a Posca pen. Here is a Deco color marker. I think this is probably like the closest dupe. It's the only other one that has fully black packaging. And I just noticed that this sticker is kind of like running into itself, so it's peeling itself up. But let's count the typefaces on this marker. So we've got one for the brand name, two for the sub font, three for all of Uchida of America's information, and this absolutely tiny instruction on how to use this marker. So that's three, four, five. Um, what is this font? Why did you replace the L in Lightfast with a little sun guy? There's supposed to be a little L behind the sun guy, but it's so dark, you can't see it at all. Light, fast, xylene free, lead free, permanent, waterproof, odorless, acid free, non toxic. Um, they're really trying to hammer in that they're lead free. Store in a horizontal position, clean nib when finished. That's a new one. Make sure cap snaps on securely. Over here on this marker, part of this printing is just really bad. Like, it's, it's kind of. Some of these lines are too thin to show up very well, so a little disappointing, but these markers have one at something. Because they have, it's one, two, three, because they have four of these little stopper nibs, I think these are the only ones that if they do roll at all, they stop after like one. Like the brand name is staying up the entire time and I'm not oop, being gentle. I really like the caps for these. It's easy to tell which ones are the deco colors. One thing I will have to knock these for, at least for this marker, it does not match the color at all. You're definitely not getting a hot pink color. This is kind of like a midpoint between Posca's pink and Posca's coral pink. The name and number of the markers is included. Luckily, it's easier to find because you got the brand name and then it's like right here. It's kind of hard to miss. I wish that this was included in the packaging in another way, but they're included on each 
one and they actually aren't a separate sticker it's just a part of the, the main sticker as far as the packaging goes for these they're pretty close to Posca's. While I wish their color name was included somewhere else on, this, on the marker in a more designed focused way, I will say the caps really do save them just because they are pretty unique and also they really stop them from rolling around. So I'm gonna give these the same points as Posca's of four. For the swatching, we will be using the pink and the violet. Like the Morphone markers or Morphony markers the other day, these you've got to make sure they are fully mixed. So here is the pink, which is very much not the hot pink the cap promises, and the violet, which I expect it to be lighter as well, but I'm not complaining very much. Since these are chisel nibs, you'd figure they wouldn't give you very good dots, but the tip of the chisel nib is actually pretty good at it. For the line, here is the thinnest versus the thickest line. I feel like these nibs are a little soft. You can see just how much they frayed. That's from not very much use. So here's the thinnest and the thickest for the purple. I'm having some opacity issues with the very center of the pink here. Definitely not the same story with the purple. Letting it dry really shows you just how weird the opacity is for this pink. Let me shake it up again, make sure it's not. Here's layer two and layer two for the purple. You can definitely see a change in the opacity for the pink. A little bit for the purple too, it does get a little darker in this section, but I'm finding that it's not as important in the darker colors. Next we have our gesso test to test kind of like a rougher texture of paper. I'm not getting any splatters from the pink or the purple, so pretty good for on the gesso. I have been falling in love with chisel nibs though. They've been so nice for filling in these blocks. And it's not really ripping up the paper that much. I've been having a few issues with that in this paper for this test series. Let's move on to the varnish test. This is to make sure you can brush on a varnish and it won't bleed. And I'm gonna go back and forth a few times. <sighs> yeah. Like pretty much every other marker in this test series, it's gonna fail the varnish test. Even the slightest amount of bleeding is really unfavorable to me. It makes it look really muddy, and if any of these paints were next to a white area, you'd instantly be able to tell. So that's a little disappointing. Next we are on to the opacity test. We're going to layer the light over the dark and vice versa, so here's some dots. Yeah, I was a little worried about layering these markers together. The pink as a whole has some opacity issues, so that'll probably be a point off. Same with the varnish. I've been treating that as a point off. Next is the sketch test. We will lay down a scribble for pencil and color erase. Let's make sure to clean the nib. So here's the pencil test. In the one layer area, it definitely smears the sketch and you can see the pencil through some parts of it. The color race tends to disappear behind the warmer tones, so can't see it as much there. And then we're having none of those problems with the dark color, so this will just be a half point off at most. Well, we can kind of combine that into the one point off for the pink's opacity because that's all the same issue. It's not really dragging it around as much as I thought it would, so that's fortunate at least. The last section is our colored pencil section. I like to layer over some of my 
paint marker pieces with colored pencil just to give a little bit extra texture. We'll lay over the pink area with a red colored pencil. I'm getting a good amount of opacity at the bottom, good vibrancy, and it's not really grabbing oddly at any spots as I fade it out. Pretty good for that one. Let's see. We'll have to use a black colored pencil on the purple. Okay, it's not as great, but it's not grabbing at the pen any differently than the red did. So, so it passes the colored pencil test. Now let's see here. We're going to take one point off for the opacity issues here and one point off for the varnish test. So that's three points in total for this section. All right, now let's get into the drawing. Every brand in this series has been matched up with one randomly selected illustration, and all of these illustrations were randomly generated. This particular character is a deer furry who has a pixie cut, is wearing a crop top, and is holding a spell book. I also gave them a magic wand just to complete the idea that I had in my mind. So full disclosure on the order that I recorded these in, this is actually the second one that I recorded in the entire drawing series. and. I was a little concerned at first about using chisel nibs. This was the first time I had ever used a chisel nib. And I think these have won me over on them. Because this marker in particular has a really firm nib, so the chisel nib, when you use it on its very tip, doesn't compress, you're able to get into nice fine areas. And then on the flip side, you're able to fill in large areas in very little time. The one problem this marker has is the color consistency. Gigi also swiped his tail across my, my piece while it was still wet, so I got to test out how it works at covering over itself, which the yellow is actually pretty opaque. I was very surprised. But the one mark place where this marker fails, I feel, is color consistency. The pink, if you're not careful, was really watery to come out at first. Um, and then, no matter how hard I shook the red, it didn't come out in a consistent color. You can see in some areas it's lighter, in some areas it's darker. I think I just need to actually spend longer than five seconds shaking the marker, which I don't usually do, but I've gotta say, I would put in the extra moments for this marker. Out of this entire series, these markers are incredibly juicy. The nib is incredibly easy to work with. This is one of only two markers in this entire series that made me say, am I just using Posca's right now? Like, it felt completely indistinguishable. Every one of these pieces has gotten line art in um, in Posca pens just to give everyone a fair fighting chance. And I wish I had a color dark enough to contrast the, the violet, but here we are. I think the black liner actually did end up working for this piece, but I actually really enjoyed working with these markers. They really felt indistinguishable from Posca's. As far as I know, the smallest Posca chisel nib is like a four millimeter, whereas these are a two to four millimeter, so in the same size range as the average Posca. They didn't creep under the washi tape at all. Um, they caused a little bit less bending of the paper in comparison to the Posca pen. The only really big drawback I think these have is the color inconsistency, but I think in this piece in particular, it kind of works for me. I, I might be entirely biased of the fact that these markers just gave me the least amount of trouble, so therefore I thought they were better, but as soon as I finished this piece, I put it on my wall. This is going to be a rather difficult judgment call for me. 
It's unfortunate that it does have these pigment differences because that's really the only problem with them. They work great, they, they lay great, they reacted to the tape well, and they're beautifully vibrant colors. Plus, the chisel nib in this pen is what finally has opened my eyes to the world of chisel nibs. Because before these, I was kind of still on the fence about them being good for paint markers. So I think purely because these are only going to get one point off in the drawing section because of the pigment issues, giving them a four out of five, meaning out of 15, these have an 11. Why did I do those ones there? Which means these are currently the number two marker out of every one I have tried. Our current leaderboard is Amsterdam in last place, Montana markers, Liquitex, Arteza, Crank, Pebeo, Molito, Morphoni, Deco Color by Marvi Uchida, and Posca Pens. Thank you guys for coming along with me while I work on this little fiction. This is one of my favorite pieces I have made in this entire series, and I really hope you guys like her as well. The Paint Marker Marathon continues. Hopefully the next in the series will be up tomorrow. If not, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be able to see what the next marker brand is. I'll see you guys later.